I have simulated 100 years to see if Gibraltar can win an international tournament. However, I have assisted them because without giving them any assistance, that would probably be impossible. I gave them a youth rating of 200 out of 200. It was in the low 40s, I think, to begin with. They are a developed state and I give them importance of match importance to maximum as well. Not to mention every single team that we have here in the Gibraltarian League will have superb or state-of-the-art training and youth facilities. If we went through, every single team has exactly the same. They also have 20 for youth coaching and youth rating. We're giving them everything that they possibly need to produce the best wonder kids coming through Gibraltar, which is basically just a big rock. Now, the reason why I've picked Gibraltar, they are one of the, obviously the smallest nations in the world and obviously a bit of a meme alongside San Marino that you should be demolishing these part-timers every single week. But if we take a look at Glasses United here, this is the team my granddad played for uh, back in the 70s and you can see early 70s, they were dominant. My granddad was a striker for them. He scored a number of goals for Glasses United. So Gibraltar, where he lived, my dad lived, it holds a lovely little place in my heart. So can we produce the next Barry Robinson and see if we can take Gibraltar and maybe even Glasses United to the top of Gibraltarian League and win a World Cup or a Euros? There's only one way to find out. We're set, we're gonna come back every 25 years. For reference point though, the current competition reputation is sat in 104th place in behind like the Montenegrin second division, I think that might be. And Gibraltar itself, we can see is world ranking of 204. That's right down the bottom if you had to scroll all the way down and there's hardly anybody else below them. If you take a look, they're basically like the Bahamas, the British Virgin Islands, San Marino down in 209th. This is also a season in and we've given them a little bit of a boost at the start in years. We've given them some sponsorship money through the league to hopefully give them a little bit of a push to begin with. So let's simulate 25 years into the future and see how they're progressing. Okay, we're here 25 years on, massive upgrade in the league reputation. We're all the way up into 56th already, so that is absolutely phenomenal. And in fact, we've gone to 52nd in the past, dropped back down. Magpies have been dominant. Wow, they really have been dominant. Lincoln Redimps, who start off as the best team, uh, were there. And then the Magpies have been dominant for a long period of time. Glasses United in second place. Come on, Glasses. Uh, let's go. But what's the most important thing that we've got to check is Gibraltar themselves. So here are Gibraltar, 58th. Oh my God, look at the manager. Jack Grealish is the manager of Gibraltar, which is quite hilarious, really. Uh, we do have some top players dotted in around European clubs. Ethan Napoli here. Funny name, to be fair, isn't it? Uh, Ethan Napoli. He finds himself at Arsenal. He is a world-class player. Jamie McNally as well. Playing for Freiburg there in the Bundesliga. We've got James Carter. I'm curious to see what their attributes are. So 166 current ability. They are producing some incredible wonder kids already. I don't think, though, that we would have been winning competitions. No, but we were the runners-up of the under-19s in 2044, two years ago. That's amazing. Uh, that was won by Italy as well. So with the runners up, that's a great start to begin with. Not bad at all. We need to push on from that though. I thought I'd take a gander at the managers because Jack Grealish has been there for 231 days. We have Frank Lampard. He was sacked after a year. Federico Chiesa was there for nearly four years. I don't recognize the other names, but that is quite hilarious when you see the likes of Frank Lampard, Chiesa and Jack Grealish, some of the world's best midfielders as Gibraltar manager. Now, before we take another 25 years into the future today's video is sponsored by spitch yes yeah, spitch are here the brand new fantasy football in that that you can download on your phones for free and have a lot of fun with and yet still win a lot of prizes and or money for the next few game weeks if you finish in the top 10 on a pitch in spitch in the premier league you win yourself some fantastic prizes including apple watches and even up to a package holiday and across the three weeks if you finish in the top 20 there are more prizes again to be won like i mentioned it's a fantasy football app but you don't have to have started at the start of the season 
to play or win prizes. And you can even join community leagues and create one yourself possibly. Or you can join mine. I've got one as well with Dad in it and we are battling out every single week against a lot of you guys. There's about 40 of you now in the league and it is a lot of fun. You don't have to like make transfers for certain players each week. You basically pick a brand new team. So there's not a limited amount of transfers, for instance. And all the statistical analysis is on the app. You don't have to leave the app to find out who's doing the best. At the top of the description, I'll leave a link to join Spitch for free, like I mentioned. You can obviously win a lot of prizes and money in the future. And the right underneath it will be a link towards my community league. Make sure you come over and say hello. But unfortunately, you do have to be 18. Take a picture of your ID for verification. And it is for the UK and Ireland. But thank you once again for Spitch for sponsoring today's video. Let's take a look at 50 years into the future. 50 years on then. The year is 2071. And the Argus Insurance Premier League is, well, the Premier Division, is in 18th place in behind the Danish League, above the Norwegian League and the Croatian League. We're climbing. We're climbing places. Please, Glasses United. No, they still haven't won it yet. That's really disappointing. Manchester Six is there. St. Joseph's. Gibraltar Lions has come back. Who remembers, by the way? Let me know down in the comments. Comment, yes, I watched that too, or something like that. Jack's work the space his Gibraltar Apex series. That's another reason why I love Gibraltar. I watched the ass out of that series. It was amazing. Fair play to work the space. Absolutely adored Gibraltar Apex. Got a feeling that was like FM 16 or 17. I can't quite remember, but it probably is still on YouTube. If you want to check out, I <laughs> honestly, I know his stuff now is amazing, but that was peak work the space for me, if you ask my opinion. Now, the world rankings were currently sat in 31st place, so we are still on the up again. So that's not bad at all. Who are the teams around us? We've got Australia, Poland, Japan, Cameroon. Above us, Czech Republic, Algeria, a few African clubs as well. We're getting the walls of the big boys. It's coming close. Let's take a look then, because top players, we've got a few who are playing at Barcelona, Chelsea, Benfica. Who is Henry Gamble? Oh my God, he's an incredible player. Uh, he was trained at Manchester 6. We can see he left for 725k and he's been moving. Current total uh, cost is 89 million pound and he is scoring goals in La Liga for Barcelona. He has a current ability of 166 with a potential of 172. He is 28 though so he is almost at his peak at the right time. We've got another player here Jordan Smith 162 again so they are producing the best players. This one interestingly enough actually come through Barcelona's academy so that's now having an effect there too. They're coming through Catalan clubs and declaring themselves for Gibraltar and we can see he's had 77 caps in total. Speaking of the Gibraltarian National Club though, have they won any competitions? So obviously we won the, well we were runners up of the under 19s in 2044. We did that again in 2056 but look how close we're getting in other, uh, other age groups now. In 2071 we were not only the runners up in the European Championships under 21 level but we were third place in the World Cup under 20s level. That's this year as well. 50 years it's taken us to almost get to becoming an under 20 World Cup finalist, but we were the runners up of the European Championships and we were beaten out by Spain as well. Oh, that's a tough one to take, isn't it? I can't see. I mean, we've got player of the match here was this man coming through the Gibraltarian. He come from Glasses United. It's basically Barry Robinson. Uh, he's at Arsenal right now and his potential is 139. So it's not a lot um, that we can see. Only 825 Ks just signed for Arsenal after having that fantastic fantastic season. What's interestingly enough now is at this point we have started qualifying for World Cups. We can see here we have made the World Cup three times and we were in the group stage in 2038. 20 years later we've qualified again and got through to the second round but this is very unfortunate. So nine years ago we reached the World Cup, we lost to Spain in the third round after extra time. We're getting so close to even quarterfinals now which is pretty amazing. The Euros though even looks better because if you take a look at this we've reached a semi-final in 2052 we got to the semi-final we faced holland or the netherlands uh, and they knocked us out in the semi-final we have also reached the second round knocked out in the extra time by Germany, second round knocked out by France, and quarter finalists there knocked out by Serbia, only on penalties, but we started qualifying 
quite early on. 2040 is when we qualified and progressed through to the group uh, where we were knocked out by Poland in the second round. They currently also have a qualifying group going on right now. We're second place only to Denmark. Three wins and one loss to Denmark themselves. 75 years then. The year is 2096. And the league reputation is at 13. I'm disappointed. I thought it would go higher than that. But at the same time, there are obviously a number of factors which go into league reputation, including, of course, things like Champions League wins and obviously how many qualifications. I'm curious if we look at the rules structure now. So the top place goes through to the second qualifying round of the Champions League, which is obviously fantastic because that's never the case uh, when you start off. It's nowhere near that. It would just be nice, though, for it to just be an automatic position into the group stage. But that's fine. Past winners, no glasses united. I'm devastated, really. I'm disappointed they're not performing up to the standard that my granddad held in the 70s. Gibraltar themselves, though, are up into 10th place. Wow, that is a huge jump. And the fact that they've dropped down, they were actually in 9th place at 1.2. Uh, Turkey have just overtaken them. But look at the clubs they're above. Uruguay, Italy, Ghana, Colombia. This is amazing. This is absolutely incredible. Germany are currently number one with Spain second. Obviously a rival nation in Spain, right where Gibraltar are, right on the uh, the coast of Spain. So this is fantastic. The league reputation is now excellent as well, which we need to take a look at. Jamie Wheeler is the manager. I do want to see if there was any other managers that maybe we recognise. I, I mean, Jack Grealish was there. That's where he was sacked after two years. There hasn't been anybody that I recognise since. Uh, so that's more of the case of obviously regens coming through. But Joe McGowan is currently playing at Villarreal. There's a few players that have been playing at Villarreal. Let me know whether you know, like geographically, whether the city of Villarreal is anywhere near Gibraltar because there just seem to be quite a lot of players who end up at Villarreal. They haven't come through like their youth system. Here's Europa point for Joe McGowan. But still, I mean, he is their best player by what the game is saying and he is rated 183. Whew. That is huge. A fantastic right midfielder. He's 31 now as well. But yeah, we're in 10th place right now. That's fantastic growth. I don't believe it as well. So competitions wise, runners up of the World Cup. The last World Cup that we had as well. Uh, I still haven't seen any... We've got a winners there, French Youth Invitational. That's, that doesn't really count for much. Uh, runners up of the World Cup under 20s and 27-9. Uh, you even nations were the runners up. And third place in 2079. But 2094, we were the runners up of the World Cup, which is mental. Uh, so the final was played. Oh, we lost to Portugal in the final. I do want to see like all the way through the rounds though. So let's take a look at the tree. So uh, we faced Turkey in the semis. We defeated them. We faced Italy. These are the nations that are around us. So that's obviously the reason why uh, we managed to get through. We beat Algeria in the second round, then Belgium in the third round. Italy in the quarters, Turkey in the semi-finals, losing only to Portugal in the finals. Oh, that's so close. That is so close. Uh, okay, fair enough. The promising thing is now, though, that it does look like we're making every single World Cup. You can see a lot of second round and third round eliminations there, as you really expect. They're very much like what England do, to be, to be fair. And we can see the Euros, we've got to the second round, a quarter finalist, three times in a row, uh, twice being knocked out by Germany. I mean, we've been knocked out by Germany three times in a row, but twice was in the quarterfinals on penalties and extra time and on penalties against Denmark. We must be the most unluckiest nations ever in the Euros. Twice on penalties, extra time, unbelievable. 100 years. We are here, 21-21. The reputation of the league is still in 10th. It's not bad. I guess it's just a little bit annoying that we're not getting to that point where we are obviously, you know, challenging for the Premier League after 100 years. Mons Kalp is the team that's just won the league. I'm curious how they like spending money on the on transfers. 170, yes they are. They are definitely spending money. 64 million pound for another player from the same league, Andrew Dudley, who is also Gibraltarian. Yes. So happy with that. I mean, he doesn't look like a player that should be 64 million. I mean, his actual current ability is outstanding. So yes, actually, I'm, I'm a liar. But it's great that they can keep him in the league. So, so much money is being spent. I guess if you take a look at this, um, no money was spent for ages until we got to here. 
So although I backed them and give them sponsorship money to begin with, first like 15, 25 years, they didn't really use it until it got to this point. That's only Mons Calp anyway. Other other nation, other clubs, sorry, in the nation might have done. I'm also really devastated to find out Glasses United have never won it since we started simulating. 2000 was the last time. Yeah, the, uh, the, the best era was definitely my granddad's. But Gibraltar themselves are still in 10th place. So we haven't gone up from where we were when we last came back. But 10th place is not bad at all. It's still decent. I'm curious though, have we ever got past the semi-final at least? That's all I really want. I want to get past into a final. That would be absolutely fantastic. World Cup winners. World Cup winners. 21 That's the last World Cup. That is the last World We're the current holders of the World Cup. Gibraltar. It was played in China as well. Wow. I'm so happy with that. I am so happy with that. I we've got to see this. They beat Brazil in the final. Look at that. That's incredible. We can't take a look at the fixture. That's annoying. Oh, that's amazing. I can't believe it. Uh, let's take a look at the tree then. So they beat Brazil in the final. Let's go back from the beginning there. So Argentina, they beat Argentina to begin with. Uh, no, they didn't. They beat Angola 3-0. Then they beat Argentina 2-1. Then they won on penalties against Italy. There's the luck that we were talking about. They beat Holland or the Netherlands 1-0 in the semi-final. And they defeated Brazil in the final 2-0. Easy. Lovely stuff. Look at that. That's oh, I'm so happy with that. So happy. The Euros. Did we do anything in the Euros? They were the runners-up. And that's the under 20s. They've never done anything in the Euros. Amazing, really. Never got to the final in the Euros, yet they've won the World Cup. You think it'd be the other way around. It's quite easier to win the Euros, obviously, with other nations in the World Cup competing. Uh, the UEFA Nations League, they were only runners up again in the 2079. They've really done nothing. World Cup runners up 2094, won it in 2118. That's outstanding. The Euros, they lost in the second round quarter final. They got to a semi final once there and lost. To Portugal again, ever since the 2076 one. Oh, it's a tough one to take, really, isn't it? But there we go, Gibraltar. I mean, a lot of their players, Jamie O'Hanlon there is at Barcelona. He looks incredible again. Uh, started off at Europa, 160 there for his current ability. And we got George Jeffrey, who currently plays for Chelsea and has a very high rating. But that is outstanding. Now, one thing I do want to check, have you ever won a European competition? Now, I've gone through and I've checked both the Champions League and Europa League and nothing. However, when we got to the Europa Conference League, Magpies, 2078-79, they won the Europa Conference League. They beat my German side, Eintracht Frankfurt, in the final there. But if I scroll down through, I can't see any other times that they've won it. However, they were runners up there. Uh, Moscow was the winners in the final. Uh, still can't see any other Gibraltarian teams. That's an interesting team to win it, though. From Austria, they don't really, you don't really tend to see that nation win it, uh, that, um, that club win it it from Austria it's usually at Salzburg isn't it that you see quite often but as we go down even further yeah it does look like it was only one final and one victory for Magpies and that seems to be the only team from Gibraltar who have managed to pick up oh no Mons Kalp they've won it recently 2020 well 21 11 12 they won it there. Did they finish runners-up at any point? They didn't. Sure, Gordon's have been doing really well recently. I've seen them win it a couple of times too. Wow. Okay. Mons Cup also were fight up uh, runners-up there. Two Sugar Gordons in 2098-99. A couple of times then they've been a little bit successful, have the Gibraltarian teams. Now the last thing that I've checked is the Ballon d'Or winners. Was there many Gibraltarian Ballon d'Or winners? And yes, but there wasn't as many as what I thought. Considering I'd set their youth rate in 2200 and give every team in that nation 200, well, 20 for their youth recruitment and youth coaching. And of course, we started to implement a little bit of money. And of course, we turned the importance of the game in Gibraltar up to maximum as well. I thought we'd see probably 10 in the 100 years players come through and win the Ballon d'Or. So you think it only takes one player to be the best player in the world and dominate like there's a few here who dominated for four or five years. I thought we'd probably get 10 Ballon d'Ors. No, three in total, including 2100, Sean Taylor from Liverpool, who retired at the age of 37. He come through Hound Dogs, uh, went to Gibraltar Lions, Europa Point at that at that stage. So that's one of the only ones that I can find. There's a couple uh, in the earlier years as well, around the 60s, I think, who won it. 
but that does surprise me that we only see one Ballon d'Or, well, three Ballon d'Or winners and none recently either. Like it was dominated pretty much by this Slovakian player who seems to be incredible and is retired now. Well, he's a manager uh, at the age of 38, but he seems to have won it loads. But that does shock me. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments if there's any other experiments like this you'd like to see going forward in the future. Let me know. We're interested in doing these 100 year Sims with different scenarios because they are a lot of fun. Thank you very much to Thomas First, by the way, who was one of my simulators. He helped me with this for 100 years while I can do other videos at the same time. So big shout out to you. Let's get a thank you, Thomas, down in the comments as well, as well as let me know whether you watch Jack's Work the Space Gibraltar Apex series. Smash a like. We get 1,000. I'll be forever grateful. And I'll see you soon on another video. Bye-bye.